Convixio's CureAML? Well, that's a hard question to answer. We think in most cases, the patients that are treated with Vixios that have secondary AML are not dealing with a subtype of AML that is considered curable without a bone marrow transplant. Now, there may be some cases where Vixios does cure patients, um, but that's clearly not the, ma the majority of patients. And the path to cure for most cases of AML, especially secondary or higher risk AML subtypes is clearly through a bone marrow transplant. Vixios is effective at getting patients into remission and paving the way for a future bone marrow transplant that can be curative. And that's, I think, its main role is to get excellent disease control and bridge a patient to a potentially curative transplant. What research is being done with Vixios to make this therapy more effective? So there's a lot of uh, different clinical research studies being done right now to um, better understand how Vixios might be used in combination with other newer and targeted drugs. Uh, right now there are several trials going on that are combining Vixios with, with drugs such as uh, venetoclax, uh, drugs such, uh, such as uh, giltaritinib, which is a FLT3 inhibitor, uh, drugs such as gemtuzumab, which is a, which is a CD33 antibody drug conjugate. So there's quite a bit of excitement that Vixios can be a platform uh, with which to combine other targeted therapies to further improve the outcomes, but we definitely need to see more in the way of mature studies to really understand the impact of these combinations. So there has been a lot of progress made in the therapy for AML over the past five to seven years, including not just Vixios, but several other novel therapies in combination. I think the most notable one that has really become mainstream in the clinic is the combination of azacitidine and venetoclax. And that regimen was developed primarily for older, less fit, more frail patients and determined to have a, a really impressively high response rate and survival rate uh, in that group of patients. It kind of led to the question, well, if it works very, very well in this less fit group of patients, wouldn't it work just as well, or maybe even better in, in younger, more fit patients? And that may be true. Um, and then the next question would be, well, how does it compare to more traditional therapy or more intensive therapy such as Vixios? And unfortunately, we don't have an answer to that question because the two regimens, Vixios on one hand and azacitidine venetoclax on the other hand, have never been compared head to head. So without a randomized trial, it's very difficult to make assumptions as to which treatment may be better or are they the same and what are the implications for uh, toxicity, hospitalizations, future transplant. Uh, we just don't know the answer to those questions. Uh, what we can say is that Vixios is better than 7 plus 3 in the secondary AML setting and should be, preferred, should be the preferred regimen over 7 plus 3. I think when it comes to deciding on Vixios versus azacitidine plus venetoclax, that's a very in-depth, personalized discussion between the, the healthcare team and the patient because there may be reasons for doing one versus the other that are not necessarily related to the disease, but may be related to other factors, such as the physical status of the patient, their ability to travel back and forth to the clinic on a regular, frequent basis for transfusions as an outpatient if... Uh, if they're not dealing with a good support system at home. So there are many factors that go into that decision and hopefully we'll have models that are developed over the next uh, few years that help us make that decision more rationally and, and based upon evidence rather than just um, you know, the physician or the physician's team objectively or subjectively deciding what might be best for the patient.